The Miami Dolphins have won three straight games, now sitting at five and six. And before week 13 on Thursday Night Football, we have to talk about the game that just happened on Sunday and all the good news that came from the win against the New England Patriots because not only are the Dolphins firmly in the playoff race, but they are staying relatively healthy and getting good news on a bunch of their players and how they are performing. I am Nick Roloff. This is Dolphins Today by Chat Sports. And I mentioned off the top, the Dolphins have won three straight games. Are you fired up? Are you excited about the three straight wins? If you are pumped up like me, hit that thumbs up icon. Show the love for the Miami Dolphins turnaround. All right, we have a lot of good news, great news, however you want to phrase it, to talk about after the win against New England. The first piece of news is there's no crazy injury news. And you might see the picture next to the text there, and that is Anthony Walker Jr. Because I said there's no crazy injury news, but there is one injury we do have to discuss that is going to impact this team potentially moving forward, and that is Anthony Walker Jr., the linebacker who has started over the last three or four weeks for the Miami Dolphins due to David Long Jr. not being good. They benched him, and then obviously they ended up releasing the veteran linebacker and then claimed Tyrell Dodson, who we'll talk about in just a second. But Walker Jr. left the game in the second quarter with a non-contact injury to his hamstring and then was later ruled out and did not return. And I don't love the fact that it is non-contact. I watched the replay. It was just a simple cover two. Um, defense for Miami where Walker was 5, 10 yards away from the line of scrimmage and then sprinted straight back to get into his deep zone over the middle of the field. And as he was sprinting back, he kind of hobbled up a little bit and then obviously limped to the field. Now, he did walk to the locker room on his own power, so you hope that he is going to be fine in the long term and it's not like anything crazy like a torn hamstring or anything like that. And you hope it's just a strain or a pull or something like that but we'll keep you updated. I just don't love the fact it's non-contact because that points to something not or tissue related, which could keep Walker Jr. out for a decent amount of time. And if he is out for a decent amount of time, the next man up for the Miami Dolphins will be Tyrell Dodson, who the Dolphins claimed two weeks ago before the game against um, the Las Vegas Raiders after the Monday Night Football game. Dodson was waived from the Seattle Seahawks after the Dolphins waived David Long Jr., and Dodson filled in pretty nicely as the next man up this past Sunday. I can't even lie. Five tackles in that half and a quarter of football. He also had a PBU and an interception coming in the fourth quarter when Jalen Ramsey got his hand on the football of Drake May. It popped up near the line of scrimmage, and Dodson came flying in to make the play, which set up the dagger field goal by Jason Sanders. But I thought he played well, and We'll get more information on how he played in terms of his coverage numbers and his PFF grades as the week goes on. But just a first glance watching the film, I was happy. He has good range side to the sideline. The coverage didn't look too bad. It's not like he was getting flamed consistently in the second half when Drake May was back to pass. And listen, I think he's going to be someone that impacts this team in a very positive way. And with this linebacker room looking the way it does look, right now it's going to be imperative that he fills in because with Walker Jr. potentially sidelined Dodson will likely step up and be that starting linebacker alongside Jordan Brooks and then all you do all you have is Channing Tindall and Duke Riley as your backup inside linebackers and sure maybe Miami will go out and look to add someone to the practice squad or add someone to the 53 man depending on the severity of Anthony Walker Jr.'s injury but Dodson will be the next man up and he will have to play well. Now, the one touchdown the defense gave up this past Sunday was on a miscommunication between Dodson and Cater Kohu, where Dodson was playing middle zone, ended up going to the out route. Cater Kohu was running with Austin Hooper on a vertical route over the middle of the field and then kind of turned away and thought he was going to go to the flat, and then Austin Hooper was just left wide open. But those things will get tightened up as Dodson gets acclimated to this Dolphins defense. All right, the second piece of news here at the Dolphins channel is that that Tua is playing at an MVP level. This guy has been absolutely sensational since returning from IR. He's played now in five games, and his best game came 
maybe against the Buffalo Bills, but statistically it will be against the New England Patriots where he completed 29 of 40 passes for 317 yards, four touchdowns, and zero INTs. Tua was efficient. He did not really put the ball in harm's way. He was accurate. I mean, he was just slicing up that Patriots secondary. But this should be no surprise. This is exactly what he's been doing for Miami since returning from IR. He's now played in five full games since returning from that concussion. 76.5% completion percentage. The yards per game got a boost up after this past Sunday, 255.4. He's thrown 11 touchdowns, and like I mentioned, he has not put the ball in harm's way, only throwing one interception with a staggering QB rating of 116.2. Tua has been playing on a different level, and as quarterback play looked down across the league, Tua's play has not been down. He has been playing like a top five quarterback. He has put up better numbers than a Josh Allen, than a Justin Herbert. And maybe those teams are winning. And Patrick Mahomes is another quarterback that my, Tua's outplaying, in my opinion. And sure, those teams have won more football games. But if Tua did not miss the four games that he did and say he's played in all 12 games Miami has played, or excuse me, 11 games Miami has played this year, I think we'd be talking about Tua in the MVP race and we'd be talking about how prime this Dolphins team is for a playoff run due to how well he has played and everybody else. And then this will fire you up as well. After the game was asked by reporters, how he is preparing for the game this upcoming Thursday against the Packers on Thanksgiving night. Asked about the cold weather in a primetime environment. Tua said, I'm excited to kill the narratives. Let's go bring it on. Dolphins fans, if you don't have chills, if you are not fired up from that quote from your QB1, you do not have a pulse. Tua knows how he is discussed in the media in terms of not having the strongest arm, not able to win in a cold environment, in big games, in prime time. He is going to come out with his hair on fire. Now, I will say this could go in one of two ways. This could either go in a very good way for the Miami Dolphins in terms of he comes out knowing how he has to play and how he has to kill the narrative, and he does it, and it's awesome. Or, well, he might get overwhelmed and it'll be a disaster on Thursday night. But let me know how you feel about it. Do you believe in Tua this Thursday night game against the Green Bay Packers? Type Y if you believe. Type N if you do not believe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. No, I don't know what the hell I was doing right there. But McDaniel has team bought in. That is number four here or number three on the great news from the Miami Dolphins. Because this locker room is absolutely bought in at the moment. And I am excited. Listen, did I call for Mike McDaniel to be on the warm seat, if you will, earlier in the year? Yes, but I thought his play calling was bad in the middle part of the season. And I won't go back on that. I think it was bad. And I didn't like the way this locker room was in terms of its toughness, its grittiness. It just looked like a bad team early on in the year. And maybe this team is bad, and I'm getting blinded by two wins against the Raiders and Patriots and a underwhelming Los Angeles Rams team. But either way, this locker room, in my opinion, was teetering on disaster. And Mike McDaniel right now has them moving in a very solid direction, and you should be excited about the way this team is being handled right now. They're playing for each other. They're playing for their coach. It's awesome to watch. And an example of this, Tyreek Hill woke up this morning. Now, this is central time when I got this tweet. till 5.37 in the morning, Eastern time. Up early thinking about how good Zach Sealer is. Tyreek Hill not even mentioning the offense that has been humming. No, he mentioned the defensive lineman, Zach Sealer. And he's not wrong about that. Sealer has been flat out awesome. Recovered a fumble this past week as well, thanks to Chop Robinson and company getting in and Jalen Ramsey on um, Drake May. But my goodness, Zach Sealer has been great, and I love that Tyreek Hill is showing love to the defensive linemen. 
Make sure you are subscribed because we are going to be live this Thursday night for the Packers-Dolphins football game. It will be a Thanksgiving special. Make sure you join me, and we'll have producer Reed alongside us, who's with us for the Monday night football game against the Rams. So hopefully he brings that primetime luck once again. All right, moving on here, because another reason why this Dolphins team is bought in and Mike McDaniel has me feeling nicey is that the difference in discipline, and this is based off coaching, and the reason why I called out Mike McDaniel earlier in the year is because this team wasn't disciplined. It was making dumb mistakes, fumbling, committing stupid penalties on the offensive side of the football that purely reflects on his coaching ability. But these things have been fixed. The Dolphins averaged eight penalties in their first six games of the year when I was very upset at Mike McDaniel and was calling for him to be on the hot seat a little bit, if you will. Well, over the last five games, also coinciding with Tua being back, they're just averaging four penalties per game. They've been the most disciplined team in football since Tua's return. And Tua is not the end-all, be-all on why this is happening. But I will make a point is that he's getting the ball out of his hands quicker, so there's less chances for the Dolphins' offensive line to commit a penalty. There's less illegal shifts, illegal motions, um, illegal formations by this Dolphins' offense. Maybe that is on Tua. But the defense is also not committing any penalties. It's just been an unbelievable turnaround by this Dolphins' coaching staff and team to have these guys more prepared to play. They're beating themselves less. They beat themselves against the Colts. They beat themselves against the Bills. Now, that's still in this five-game window, but they're doing it at a less frequent rate. They're letting other teams beat themselves up. How many times did we see the New England Patriots commit a holding and a false start and a legal formation yesterday, which cost them drives? The Dolphins aren't simply doing that anymore, and it's why their offense has been so efficient at moving down the football field and scoring 30-plus points in back-to-back -back weeks and averaging 28, 29 points per game over the last five weeks. Now, I will say this. The last three games have been very, very fun. And you can go back and really talk about how fun the Bills game was as well offensively. But the last three wins have been awesome. It means absolutely nothing if you lay an egg this Thursday against the Packers. And I mean, serious. Like, even if the Dolphins lose this game, I don't think the season is over because I think they're going to be capable of winning the last five games to end the season 10-7. and seven. But if you go out there and get blown out and lose like a – 31 to 10, 31 17, and the game was really never close. Well, then I'm going to have to question that and really talk about how this was really just a team beating up on bad teams in the Rams, the Patriots, and the Raiders. But if you go out there and are competitive or win against the Packers, I think we can know this team is for absolute real. All right, the holidays are vastly approaching. Thanksgiving this Thursday, Christmas just around the corner. And if you need to get a gift for yourself or someone else, well, make sure you get a Dolphins jersey. Chatsports.com slash Dolphins jersey. They're on sale right now. You can get a Tyree Kale, Jalen Ramsey, um, Jalen Waddle, Tua Tungavaloa. They have all different sizes, all different styles. They have Salute the Service jerseys as well, throwbacks and Marino jerseys. I believe I saw Ricky Williams jersey, my personal favorite. Get a jersey today for yourself, for a loved one, a family member. It does not matter. Either way, take advantage. Link is in the description and comments of today's video. It's chatsports.com slash Dolphins jersey. All right, last piece of great news. Jalen Waddell and Johnny Smith are coming alive, and, and it's just awesome to watch how effective they've been um, this season for Miami in the last three or four weeks. Waddle has been very, very quiet all year long. Finally had his breakout game, if you will, this week against the Patriots. And I called it in our Keys to Victory tailgate portion of the show or in our live stream yesterday. I said that he was going to need to have a big game. And boy, did he. Eight receptions on nine targets, 144 yards, and a score. But we can't not mention Jonu Smith. Jonu Smith has been absolutely fantastic over the last eight quarters. And the last eight quarters for John New Smith has been the best eight-quarter stretch of football he has played in his entire career. He had a career-high 101 yards against the Raiders last week and then followed it up with nine receptions for 87 yards and a touchdown this week. And if we're going to be honest, John New Smith has become Tua's guy. He has. It's just as when you watch the games and how this offense kind of works right now, when Tua gets pressured, when he wants to get the ball out of his hands quickly, it has been to John New Smith, the person that I labeled as an X-factor for this Dolphins offense in the offseason. 
It got off to a really slow start. But coming out of the bye week, he had a big game against the Indianapolis Colts. And then over the last five games, since Tua has been at quarterback for the Dolphins, he's been awesome. 27 catches. So he's averaging five catches plus a game. He's also averaging about 60 yards per game, 299 over his last five. And then in the last eight quarters, he has three touchdowns. He had two against the Raiders. He had one against the Patriots. He has been dominating opposing teams and really taking advantage of mismatches against safeties and linebackers in the middle of the field. Excuse me. And Tua has been just able to really find him and use his ability to make plays with his legs after the catch as well. All right, we have a big game on Thursday against the Green Bay Packers. Give me your confidence level in the Dolphins getting a win. Scallop won the 10 down in the comments section. All right, that will do it for this episode of Dolphins today. We'll be back later in the day with another video for the channel, but we will also have you covered with a video on Tuesday and Wednesday, as well as being live on Thursday night. It's Thanksgiving. Enjoy the time with your family, and hopefully you will join us at the nightcap of Thanksgiving for Dolphins Packers Thursday night football. Should be an unreal game with a lot on the line for both Miami and Green Bay. It'll be a playoff atmosphere and a tough environment. So let's do it. Let's go, Fed. Thank you.